The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits, so get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Janelle Bush, and Janelle is with the Alzheimer's Association. Welcome, Janelle. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, yes. I'm glad you're here because I know you folks are doing some very important work Yes, we are. I hear about you all the time. I know all kinds of people <laughs> that are benefiting from your services. And so tell us a little bit about what you're up to these days. Sure. So June is actually Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, oh. which is kind of a great initiative for us to push our programs, push what we do, and just raise awareness for the cause. So That's we, good. yeah, we are. The Alzheimer's Association is a national nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very large, but we have local chapters. Mm -hmm. And so our chapter is the California Central Coast chapter. We serve three counties, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, and Ventura. Okay. Our headquarters are in Santa Barbara. All right. And we provide um, local services to constituents, support groups, education programs um, for people living with the disease and for people caring for someone oh. with the disease. Yeah, that would be important. I bet there are a lot of things that are really important for caregivers to know about the disease. Yes. Like I've heard somebody say, don't, don't contradict or don't argue with someone. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's recommended to kind of go along with in the later stages, someone living with dementia is living in their own reality. Sometimes they make up situations that they believe to be true and so it's recommended that you don't argue with them, you don't try to tell them that they're wrong, and you go along with what they're saying. And uh, we have a lot of education classes that uh, can help someone, a caregiver at home, uh, figure out how to communicate with someone with dementia, uh, figure out what next steps to take um, as they get into the later stages. There's just a lot of education that's very helpful to know as you enter into this journey. Um, and we provide it all for free, so it's great. Wow, for free? Yes, for free. So I've, I've heard also that um, a lot of times in the beginning, the, the caretakers, the family members, the friends, they don't quite recognize what's going on. So they right. wouldn't even think, oh gosh, um, I should get in touch with the Alzheimer's Association and of course. get a class. And so sometimes it takes a little while. Yeah, and that's also part of maybe the process of even getting a diagnosis can be oh, a little tricky. Sure, sure. Um, people might start showing signs for it, but not recognize that they might have dementia, that they might have Alzheimer's. So we really recommend um, knowing the warning signs, knowing how to detect okay. the disease, knowing what to look out for. Um, there's a difference between you know, normal memory problems. I forget things sometimes. I'm sure you forget yeah, things sure, sometimes. Sure. And then knowing when something might be wrong, knowing uh, what might be something to look for, uh, what might be a new memory change that might signify, maybe I should talk to a doctor and get this checked out. So we actually have a class about the 10 warning signs, which is very helpful to know for everyone, for, yeah, for sure. yourself. If, if you're um, aging and might be concerned about yourself developing uh -huh. dementia, or also for younger people like me, uh, for people that have parents, grandparents, yeah, neighbors, sure. you can help detect someone else's memory issues as well if, if they're unable to detect it. Uh, some of our constituents have come to us with stories about how their mom kept leaving the oven on or, or oh, was, was doing different, a change in behavior mm -hmm. that they knew that something was wrong and it's very helpful if, if they know what to look out for so that they could help a loved one 
um, figure out if they're starting to have some memory changes and can direct them towards us or towards a doctor to get a diagnosis. Wow, so what are some of the warning signs? Yeah, so typically it's what we say is like a, a change in, in memory. Oh. Um, something that we reference is maybe not forgetting where your keys are, but maybe forgetting what keys are for, oh, if okay, you're sure. not sure what they're for. Yeah. Um, but there's, again, I'd recommend going to our website, checking out um, all the classes that we offer. It's alz.org slash CA Central. And one of the classes is the warning signs. You can also find oh. that on the website. Oh, as well. well, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So um, on your website, a person can go there and find out not only the warning signs, but all of the services, which are mo mostly classes, is that right? We have classes as well as support groups. That's another oh, big support groups. service. Right, yeah. right. So we have support groups, and, and currently they're both virtual and in person. Oh, okay. During uh, COVID, we reverted to all virtual, but we've started to transition back into in-person. But we also have some hybrid, we have virtual as well to give options for everyone. Um, so support groups are one of the big services that, that people really, really enjoy. It just helps them feel like they're not alone, whether they have the disease themselves mm -hmm. or they're caring for a loved one. It's, it's a very grueling, disease and it yeah. takes a toll on someone who's caring for someone with it. So being able to sit in a group with other caregivers and just talk about the problems that they're going through, maybe they can provide some insight or some solutions for each other, give advice to each other, mm -hmm. but the ultimate thing is just being able to share what they're going through, hear what others are going through and realize I'm not alone. It's hard, yeah. but I'm not alone and other people are going through it too. That's great. So then a person can choose if they want virtual or if they want Correct. in person. Yes. And so you have support groups for those with the disease as mm -hmm. well as for caregivers. Yes. Yeah. And how many people are usually in a support group? It varies. Uh, it can be okay. as little as uh, four to eight. Uh -huh. uh, we try to keep them smaller again so that it's more of a close knit group and people feel comfortable sharing. And typically people that are in a support group kind of remain there for a while and really develop deep relationships with other people in the group. They develop friendships oh, and sure. they maintain those even beyond um, going to the support group. So it's really great to see. What about, you know, I have some friends that are in that situation mm -hmm. and what about um, caregivers that just get so tired of the dailiness of the, and the, the demand on their energy and time. Is there any, um, I don't know, respite for them? Or? Yeah, we, we actually did have a grant that provided respite and now we um, do referrals for people that can provide respite, but we have a program called the Savvy Care Caregiver, which is a five week course for um, an at home caregiver to take. Really just encourages them to, to learn how to take care of themselves. Because as a caregiver, that's uh, what we recommend is in order to take care of someone else well, you need to take care of yourself first. Um, so yeah. that's a great program for That's that. really, mm -hmm. really important. Yeah. Wow. And so you're a 501c3 nonprofit. Yes. So yes. a person can go on your website and find out about these, uh, about the volunteer opportunities. Of course, yeah. There's a lot uh, of different ways to volunteer. So. Within the programs that I mentioned, a lot of these support groups and education classes are actually volunteer-led. So oh. they're led by our volunteers okay. who have been trained, gone through a lot of training, but they also typically, most of them, have gone through the journey themselves. And so they have that next level of compassion and care mm -hmm. and knowledge through their personal experience that they can help uh, provide as a volunteer within those. But then beyond our programs, we have a lot of other volunteer um, activities. We have actually right now, we have, th we have two big fundraisers that people can get involved in. One is called The Longest Day. Mm -hmm. This is really fun. It's kind of a DIY style uh -huh. fundraiser. So people take an activity, a hobby of their choice, whatever they want and they get friends, family involved, turn it into a way to raise funds and awareness for Alzheimer's care and research and support. So um, it's called The Longest Day because 
events can happen throughout the year, but it culminates on June 21st, which is the summer solstice. Oh! It's the longest day of the year. Oh, So the gosh. longest day, we use it as the day with the most light is the day that we fight the darkness of Alzheimer's disease. Wow, that's very cool. Yeah. I've heard of the longest day, but I, oh, I never uh, realized the connection. Yes, yeah, it's kind of a fun name, uh, and it's just a great way for people to, again, do what they love and turn it into something great to give back. And we've had people do all sorts of things. We had a man uh, earlier this year, he did a cross-country motorcycle trip. Um, and it was really cool because his trip across, across the country replicated uh, a trip that he had taken with his parents as a child. Oh. And his parents both passed with dementia. So oh, he was golly. kind of honoring them yeah. in that way. Um, and he's, again, loves motorcycle riding and decided to turn that into a fundraiser. We have people baking, knitting, doing anything that they want. I, last couple years, I, uh, I run. So mm -hmm. I did a, a running challenge uh -huh. um, and I ran a 5K every day for the month of June. Holy cow, yeah, that's a lot, lot of running. Yeah, a lot of running. <laughs> and it was great, great way to exercise, which yeah. is good for your brain health and great to raise awareness and support. So the longest day is kind of going on throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. And then in the fall, we have our walk to end Alzheimer's. So the walk to end Alzheimer's is the largest um, fundraiser for Alzheimer's and disease, or for Alzheimer's and dementia uh -huh. um, in the world. And it's, it's a great fundraiser and it happens in over 600 communities nationwide. But locally wow. here, we have a walk every fall um, in Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. And it's just a great way for people to come out with their family, their friends, and um, honor either a loved one who passed or just support the cause. Yeah. Support the cause. And a big part of the walk is our flowers. So we have a flower uh, garden. And we have flowers of different colors that represent someone's connection to the cause. Oh. So there's a purple flower, an orange flower, a blue flower, and a yellow flower. And I carry the purple flower, which represents that I've lost someone to the disease. Oh, okay. I lost my grandma, my grandma Hannah, uh, when I was younger to the disease. So that's the color that I carry during the walk. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember um, how your grandma was? And I mean, were you old enough to sort of realize what was going on with her? Kind of a mix. I was, uh, she was, our, she passed when I was in seventh grade. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I was definitely old enough yeah. to recognize that something was wrong. Um, in the later stages, she didn't remember who I was. She didn't remember my siblings oh. uh, when we went to visit her. Uh -huh. But I, I also don't recall it ever being super sad because she was still very happy to see us. And yeah. it was really sweet. Every time we went to visit her, even though I knew she wasn't going to remember who I was. She was still <laughs> excited to see me. And we still had a great time hanging out with her. Um, so I knew that she had a disease, but I think I was pretty naive to what it was mm -hmm. and possibly the, the really hard things that were going on behind the scenes that I didn't see. Yeah. And so she passed when I was in seventh grade didn't really talk too much about it or try to learn more about it until I joined the Alzheimer's Association. Oh. So that was a great way for me to, over the past couple years that I've been here, just learn about what the disease is. It's very complicated. <laughs> There's a lot of aspects to it. Yes. Um, and I encourage everyone to, to learn more about what it is because it affects so many people. It affects over 6.2 million Americans right now living with it. 6.2 million? So, yeah, wow. and then over 11 million people are, are providing care. Oh gosh. So it affects a lot of people. So it's really important to learn about whether you, you do have a personal connection or not. Unfortunately, one day you probably will. Yeah. So I learned a lot about it um, and was able to actually have more conversations with my dad about what what had happened with my grandma oh. and learn a lot that I wasn't really aware of at the time. So it's really Gosh, great. I bet that would be fascinating. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And a little bit sad. It was sad. We both, yeah. we both ended up crying yeah. and, but it was, it was kind of, um, just really enlightening and 
made me feel really good about being part of an association whose yes, mission I'll is bet. is close to close to home. Yeah, that's a wonderful personal connection yeah. for you. So, okay, so back to your website. A person yeah. can go there and they can find out about these events, mm -hmm. the walk and the longest day yeah. and you know, how to get involved in maybe some examples of some DIY projects and all. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it kind of Anywhere you go, there's a lot of information to, to really help you out and lead you to whatever you want to do. Um, another volunteer opportunity is actually um, being an advocate. Oh. So while we are a nonprofit, we are very unique in the fact that we have a separate organization called the Alzheimer's Impact Movement that al allows us to advocate oh. and allows our volunteers to advocate at the local, state, and federal level wow. to help um, support research, government-funded research, oh. which is very important, All right. as well as just local bills and, and efforts to um, better the lives of people living with dementia and people caring for those people. So in terms of research, that's, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, we are the largest nonprofit funder of Alzheimer's and dementia in the world. We have a lot of funding going towards research. Uh, currently, there's over 300 million dollars um, in 920 projects in 45 countries. Holy so it's cow. global. There's a lot going on, and it's really important because there's there is no cure to this disease. Um, and we are trying to find one. Yes. And beyond just trying to find treatments, a lot of our research is going into just trying to understand the disease better, as well as seek out what preventative treatments um, there are or preventative ways um, for people to avoid getting the disease in the first mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's important. Yes, yeah. And we have one study, the U.S. Pointer study, that is currently looking into kind of lifestyle habits and mm -hmm. things that can help lower your risk. And that's something that we're very big on is, yeah. is lowering the risk because there are proven ways to do that. Um, there's not one way to for sure prevent the disease, unfortunately, but there's a variety of things that have been proven to help at least reduce the risk. Yeah. So those things, we, we have a list also, we have a lot of lists, um, the 10 ways to love your brain. So these are things that you can do while you're still healthy um, before you start showing signs to uh -huh. help prevent that one day. And you could start it as young as you know, <laughs> you could be a teenager and, yeah. and the, the actions you're doing will help um, impact you later on in life. So, for instance, exercising mm -hmm. is, is very helpful. A lot of research has proven that exercise is very helpful for your brain, um, as well as eating healthy, mm -hmm. um, lots of fruits and vegetables. We like to recommend the Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. That's a good diet yeah. to have. Um, not smoking, mm -hmm. taking care of your heart health uh -huh. is very important. Heart health is very closely tied to brain health. Mm -hmm. So avoiding or taking care of heart issues like diabetes or high cholesterol yeah. can help um, take care of your brain as well. They're very closely tied. Uh, getting enough sleep is, is very mm -hmm. important. Protecting, uh, preventing brain injury. So oh. Wearing a helmet, wearing yeah. your seat belt when good, you're driving, good, yeah. um, and then there's a, a one other thing is educating yourself, continuing education. Mm -hmm. um, that can be formal education, or nowadays you can find a lot of things online. Yeah. So um, whatever you find interesting, just continue to to learn and um, even playing games or doing activities that really get the brain going, different types of art, um, even like word games, mm -hmm. things like that are helpful as well. So there's a lot of different ways, and again, that list is on our website as okay. well. Okay, okay, that's good to And know. kind of provides more information about, you can look into the research behind it that, that proves um, that these things are very helpful for your brain health. Yeah, so a person can find whatever they're very interested in, whether yes. it's you know, advocacy or research or prevention or, you know, how to be a volunteer. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, all, all these things on your website as well yes. as while they're there. Yes. Make a financial donation. Of course.
course, yes, which we always appreciate. And donations that come uh, through the fundraisers that we have or just general donations do support a lot of our local services because oh, we do a, offer, that's good offer them at no cost. Uh -huh. And it also goes back towards the research um, so that one day we can find a cure. That's good. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Janelle, you are a busy girl. You are up to a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's a and your organiz it's a wonderful organization. Yes, it is. Yeah. Affecting so many people. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing and for being on our show to tell all about it. I'm happy to be here. Always happy to help share the message. Yes. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.